Triceratops might not have been the best pet for you. It was kind of the size of an African elephant, but you could keep this little guy, Protoceratops, which was about the size of a really big dog. But the question is, is it the right pet for you? Before we get into it, this animal had the potential to live over 30 years, so it's gonna be a long-term pet. If that's okay for you, then keep watching. Protoceratops lived in the late Cretaceous, in what is now Mongolia, in the Campanian age of the Cretaceous, almost companion. That's ironic. The frill on the back of the head was most likely used as a showpiece when competing for mates. Uh, we used to think it was for protection, but it was proven to be too weak for this purpose. Good boy. The head was actually really big for the animal size, which makes it all the more cute in my books. Speaking of the head, it was suggested by Adrian Mayer that Scythian nomads who mined gold in Central Asian mountains found fossilized skulls of Protoceratops and other Asian beak dinosaurs, which sparked the myth of the griffin. However, paleontologist Mark Witten says no. He claims that the Greeks came up with the griffin long before. But like I said, we're here to see if Protoceratops is the right pet for you. We're going to break the information up into three categories. Housing, costs, and domesticatability. First up, housing. Unlike Triceratops, you're not gonna need that much space. You could let Protoceratops roam the house like a dog, but it would likely be very destructive. Protoceratops was more like a sheep than a dog, so an outdoor enclosure would probably be ideal. There's no way to give exact enclosure size parameters, but just don't keep it in a tiny cage. Chromo Paleo Show is going to recommend a rule of four times the length of the animal squared for each Protoceratops, which we think would be enough to keep Protoceratops happy and stimulated. But remember, the bigger the better. This comes to a minimum of 16 square meters for each specimen. And if you're like me, that's 172 square feet. And if you achieve that, it'll be CPS approved by yours truly. <laughs> what? Keep in mind, Protoceratops is a herding animal. We know this because large numbers of specimens have been found in close proximity. So you'll need at least a pair to keep them happy, more if possible. Since a pair is recommended, try get two females. If you get two males, they're probably gonna be a bit rowdy and cause some issues. And obviously a male and a female, you'll end up with babies, which is maybe what you want. If you are breeding them, use a ratio of two females for every male, at least. This will prevent possible harassment. Three females to a male might be a better option. Given the fact they care for their young, breeding could be a fun experience. Oh, also, if and when you get babies or have babies available, uh, please email me. My email is in the description. You might be wondering, how are you gonna keep the animal contained? And by that, I mean, what's the enclosure gonna be made of? To keep the enclosure cost down, wood will work fine. They're not tanks. At least not as much as Triceratops, you'd need steel bars for one of those. As for fence height, Protoceratops wasn't the most fast or agile of creatures, so we estimated a four foot high fence would be fine to keep them at bay. Also, if you're not shorter than four feet, you get to peek over and you know, keep an eye on them. The enclosure size is just one aspect that will improve stimulation. Next, we need to look at what to put in the enclosure. Protoceratops lived in a very dry climate, so sand would probably be an ideal substrate. Plants are completely optional. Keep in mind that if you do plant the enclosure, most plants will probably soon cease to exist due to Protoceratops, because it's, it's a herbivore. Planting some cycad trees that would grow to be out of reach of Protoceratops will give them nice naturalistic surroundings, but keep them to a minimal because you're not planting a forest. Even some dried out desert logs would look nice. And obviously, you'll need to make a watering hole to keep them hydrated, but make sure to maintain that and clean that out. Artificial rock formations, if possible, would be a very recommended feature, and they're not that hard to do. I highly recommend YouTube channel Moore Fine Arts, which I think is how you pronounce it. They have a small series of videos that show you how to make strong artificial rock formations that look really nice. But you might want to paint your rocks for Protoceratops a lighter sandy color to match the environment. Rock formations just give Protoceratops places to explore and the varying terrain will prove physically good for them. A cave, if possible, would be great, just for some shelter if they want it. Oh, speaking of indoor space, Protoceratops will need to have a heated area. Whether that be in the cave or a separate building joint onto the enclosure is completely up to you. Now that we've sussed out what the enclosure needs to look like, we shall now move on to costs. Don't worry, this one isn't actually that bad. We've covered some other ones that's uh... The cost of food is gonna be close to nothing. Their staple diet is gonna be made up of tough, fibrous plant material, such as, you guessed it, ferns and cycads. You should take a drink every time I say ferns and cycads in a video. Good luck sourcing them for food though. You're probably better off growing your own. We know they fed on tough fibrous plant material because the skull appears to support large jaw muscles. This also means don't do anything to antagonize the animal because it's gonna mangle whatever ends up in its mouth. As well as that, you can also give some supplementary greens like cabbage or kale, 
things like that. You could try feed some lettuce, but know that Protoceratops, like a lot of other modern day reptiles, probably isn't gonna get any nutritional value from it. The cost of food could be brought down if we examine how much you need to feed Protoceratops. Food was likely scarce where Protoceratops lived. I speculated a lifestyle where herds move in groups to find pockets of vegetation. Then once that food source has depleted, move on to the next. If indeed this is a fact, individuals could have gone a decent amount of time with no food, meaning that Protoceratops maybe had a lower metabolism. So feed it every other day to every three days. Since we guess they do have a low metabolism, if you slip up a day, it's not gonna be a big deal. If you feed too often, they will become overweight. Remember, feed a staple of ferns and cycads, then on maybe every second feeding, throw in some kale or cabbage. This gives them a varied diet. There's a section of the script missing. How much you'll have to feed on every feeding was a hard one, but here's what I came up with. Keep in mind, this is purely guesswork. Take a five gallon bucket for each Protoceratops. Fill it with a mixture of ferns and cycads. Then when it's cabbage or kale day, only fill it two thirds with ferns and cycads, then throw in some cabbage or kale on top of that. If you notice any weight gain or weight loss, adjust how much you feed until you maintain a healthy weight of around 180 pounds. Ferns and cycads you can grow on your own. Just make sure you're sustainable enough to provide a five gallon bucket's worth for every Protoceratops. So that's practically free. The occasional cabbage once or twice a week is gonna to come to around one to two dollars a week. And that's for each Protoceratops. The actual cost of the animal. Usually for this, I just take the cost of a similar sized animal, then up that price because it's a dinosaur, taking an account for its rarity as a domesticated animal. Since I compare Protoceratops with a sheep, Let's go with that. I just want to point out, like I always do, if scientists only made a handful, just give up. You're not gonna get one. But if they were regularly available, then you can grab one. Hopefully you can get one as a baby, cause that'd be dope. And it would definitely help in the taming process. So sheep. Luckily for me, IamCountryside.com makes it easy. I quote, a younger open bracket, two to four year old, close bracket, productive, commercial, open bracket, non-registered, close bracket, yow, which if you don't know is a female sheep, can usually be purchased for $200 to $250. Let's take the upper estimate of $250, up that to around, I'm gonna guess $1,000. This is because we deem Protoceratops a pet and not a farmed animal. So they are a lot less available. So I guessed $1,000 for an adult. What about a baby? Well, I'm gonna resort back to IamCountryside.com with another quote. Depending on their age, lambs can be bought for $75 to $150. So as we did before, take the upper estimate and raise it to better fit the animal. So 1,000 for an adult and say around 300 to 400 dollars for a baby. But remember to get more than one protoceratops. Then there's the cost of heating, but don't worry, that's not going to be so bad. An electric heater or two isn't going to hurt the bill. Now that you have your protoceratopses, let's look at just how tame they can be. It's time for domesticatability. I tried to make that a rhyme, it, it didn't work. Obviously, since it's a herding animal, you instantly get points there because they're social. If you raise them from birth, like a pet bird seeing you as a member of its flock, Protoceratops may see you as a member of its herd. When it comes to intelligence, I could only find one source, so I don't know how credible it actually is. Enhancedlearning.com says, Protoceratops was a ceratopsian, whose intelligence open bracket, as measured by its relative brain to body weight, or EQ, was intermediate. I don't know what intermediate means, but they're obviously trying to be hip and cool with the kids and make this like hierarchy leveling video game system. Am I old? But they showed this handy little graph that's not that handy. And by the looks of it, Protoceratops wasn't the smartest animal in the world. And due to the fact it was a potential prey item, expect it to be a little jumpy. But over time, with lots of patience, you should get there. Don't expect it to be dog cuddly. Don't even expect it to be cuddly. But it's probably gonna get to a point where it can come up to you, say hi, you know, eat some food. You could tell people it's your friend, but it's probably just gonna look at you as a source of food. But there will be exceptions, just like how some dogs are more cuddly than others. But keeping a pet doesn't have to mean cuddles. I used to keep a sun skink called Diablo, and he would never let me hold him. But I still loved seeing him roaming around in his enclosure. It was a rewarding experience. I think Protoceratops would be on the same page as that. Maybe a little bit more tame. We're done! I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to show me you enjoyed it by hitting that like button and I'll send you a Protoceratops to your door. Is that, black? Is that bad to say? Just hit the like because it's a nice thing to do. Also subscribe and make sure you click that bell icon so you are notified when I upload my next video. Go follow us on Instagram because we post when a video is going to come out. So those of you who follow us on there, you knew this video was going to come out. All, all our social media is down in the link below. Also, some of the sources I quoted from are in the link below, but I don't recommend enhanced learning. There's a section of the script missing. Oh no. <sighs> wow.
Well, I might just have to edit that part, come back and do it tomorrow. Problem is, I'm in such a rush to get this video made that I completely, I've already messed up twice. It's actually slowed me down. If I was to take the little amount of time it would need to make sure everything was right, it would have, it would have made it a lot faster. I'd, I'd have it, had it recorded by now. Oh my God, okay, let's, um, oh. Okay, I, I, I just lost for words. Let's just go home. <laughs>